Ed, uh, I, what I like about it when you're a litigation lawyer, um, when a litigation talk, a litigation lawyer talks about winning, and uh, Ed's going to talk to us about uh, winning a case and in terms of um, the type of litigation cases that you're involved. You have in. a couple of examples, so why don't you tell us a little bit about your background in the law? Sure. I started off as an architect, actually, at Princeton University. Turns out I was really bad at it. And so I looked around, uh, thought about the things that I thought I was good at, such as um, reasoning, logic, and games. And I also hated losing more than anything else. And that seemed to draw me uh, naturally to the law. So I applied to law school and business, uh, sorry, law school and architecture school, got into both UPenn and BC Law made the first deposit at both, the second deposit at both, and with about a week to go, went to law school. And wow. I haven't looked back since. So I think- Goodbye it, architecture. Goodbye <laughs> architecture, indeed. It, and, and that, if you, if you think law's a t tough profession, architecture is a really, really hard profession. Um, it's it's uh, maybe 10 architects in the whole world do what all the architects want to do. Right. Now lawyers, um, we get to do law. We get to go into court, we get to try cases, and I've enjoyed uh, being a lawyer ever since I went to law school. Did you learn anything uh, being an architect that helps you to be a better lawyer? Yes, uh, one of the things that I do is construction law, and it really helps to be able to understand drawings. Absolutely. I used to draw these things, and so when I look at a problem uh, with a building, I can go through some of the analysis from the viewpoint of an architect, right. and I can ask the right questions of our experts. I can look through the details and say, hey, gee, this doesn't look quite right. Another aspect is the specifications, and so that dictates uh, what materials go into the building. I used to write specifications myself, and so when there is a problem that is identified by an expert, I can have a conversation with the expert in a way that someone without the architectural background simply can't do. You know, it's interesting when you talk about being in their shoes, and I think it makes you more effective pl probably in litigation on cross-examination in every step of the way. So I think that it's like, as you know, I'm a former litigator, and when I try to try to uh, talk to, because uh, I'm in the staffing business, I try to understand litigation needs. But you really don't have, I mean, um, most doctors, it's a rarity if a doctor goes to law school to get involved in medical malpractice. So I think to have that talent you do is, uh, is key, and, and uh, they're probably, it's, as, you, as you mapped up, very helpful. That's right, and that's the advantage I have, uh, in, like I said, in construction law. And so in the last, one of the recent cases that we had, which we were able to settle, uh, the client was very, very happy with the result. Um, again, I was able to uh, cross-examine and depose the experts from the uh, opposing parties in a way that the other attorneys just couldn't do because they didn't understand the drawings or the spe specifications or even really the issues in the detail that I did. Now, did the client know? Um, I just think it's so important that when somebody's representing you that they had this extra advantage that you had that background? Absolutely, it's That's one of great. the things that, that I bring to the table and I let the clients know. It's, it's something similar to the work that we do and the work that I do before the Board of Bar Overseers. So not only do I represent our uh, attorneys before the Board of Bar Overseers on disciplinary matters, but until up to January, I was actually a hearing officer for the Board of Bar Overseers. Interesting. And what that means is I was actually on the other side of the bench, if you will. On several occasions, I was part of a panel of three uh, two attorneys and one layperson, and we would hear the case brought by bar counsel and the defense uh, brought by the attorney and their attorney and the attorney uh, p uh, respondent and his attorney. And in the end, we would come to a decision, make findings of fact and recommendations to the board of bar overseers.